We are finishing off the year with a bang with our highly anticipated Frost PC build. This began three years ago on the channel and since then I've been updating it every single year around the holidays with the good old sax music that everyone loves. And well, this year is no exception. Welcome to Frost V4. ASUS and Intel were kind enough to sponsor this video and send over these components so that I get the privilege of building inside the brand new ASUS Hyperion case, a behemoth of a tower worthy of Frost V4. Oh yeah. They're also hosting one of the biggest giveaways of the year where you guys can win a bunch of awesome ROG gear. The giveaway is split into three sections. If you complete 11 Gleam tasks, which I'll link below, you unlock the Gashapon machine, where you will get a chance to win one of four amazing hardware bundles. Also, just by participating, you get the chance of winning one of 11 peripherals. Also, as a bonus, if your PC is equipped with an ASUS or ROG motherboard AIO combo, you can share your photo on IG for a chance to win one of three fan bonus prizes. So yeah, tons of opportunities to win some amazing hardware. I'll drop a link to all the details down below, along with my Gleam link if you guys want to participate. All right, let's start with the processor, shall we? We're tossing in the brand new Intel Core i7-14700K processor. This baby features eight performance cores and 12 efficient cores with 28 total threads. Combine that with a max turbo frequency of 5.6 gigahertz and you have a beast processor, not only for gaming, but also CPU intensive tasks like editing videos and streaming. So we are building a PC on the Windows 11 Pro operating system, which I was able to snag for around $20 from yourcdkey.com. Using the code TS20 will get us 28% off for the holidays, but they do offer Windows 10 Pro keys as well for around 15 bucks using the same code. After checking out, they will send the key within a minute, and then all we have to do is go into the activation settings and put it in. We're pairing the CPU with none other than the ROG Strix Z790A Gaming Wi-Fi 2. Packed with a robust power phase delivery to ensure the CPU socket gets all the power it needs. And we do get PCI Gen 5 support as well with the top by 16 slot, which will support the increased size and bandwidth of next gen graphics. But we do have four additional PCI 4.0 and 2 slots, which I'll be using one for our storage. I don't think Asus has ever, ever made their antennas in white. I'm willing to bet my third nut that both antennas for my PC and my wife's PC were in black, even though the motherboard itself was in white. I, mean, I would have noticed the white antenna. So this must be something new that Asus is doing. That's awesome. It was only a matter of time, I guess. Wait, what is this connection? How do you plug this in? You just snap it in? This is peak PC building. Look, hear me out, okay? Earth has existed for billions of years, right? Yet we somehow managed to exist in this time period where we have access to features like this. We're the luckiest son of a bitch alive. This just goes to show that ASUS is still the pioneers in the PC building community. And I'm sorry for being so excited over small things like this, guys, but like it's the little things for me that get me really moist. For memory sticks, we're going with the Dominator Titaniums from Corsair once again. Um, it's funny because at first I hated these sticks, but over time it kind of grew on me. Now I'm obsessed. I'm absolutely obsessed with this design, and I think it's going to complement really nicely with the case and the rest of the build. Oh yeah, the white ones, without a doubt. One of the cleanest sticks in existence, I have to say. All right, let's pop this bad boy in. Per usual, I'm going with two sticks for stability instead of the four that I normally put in these builds because a stable overclock is much more important to me than using up all four DIMM slots. As much as I wanna focus on the beauty of the build, performance is just as important. Now, since we're only going with two sticks, I made sure to get the highest capacity um, DIMM modules as I could. So instead of the usual 16 gig per module, I went with 24 gigs. So this is gonna give us a total of 48 gigs of DDR5 memory running at 7200 megahertz with CL36 timing. Yeah, looking pretty good. Next up is storage. I feel like four terabytes is plenty for a couple games in 2023. That's like maybe Modern Warfare 3, Warzone and a few other games if you're lucky. Now this does come with its very own heatsink which we have to remove because we'll be using the one provided by the motherboard. 
It's unfortunate that my Fantec electric screwdriver broke down literally two days ago, so I'm using my backup. In the meantime, we just have to remove four of these screws and then we can slide this out. This is literally identical to the Fantec screwdriver kit that you guys saw in the Cool Tech video, but just a more compact, smaller size. And it doesn't have a motor, so it's guaranteed to work for a long time. Nice. We don't need the thermal pad, so we can peel these off as well. Let me give you guys some ASR real quick. Look how satisfying this noise is. Ah, oh, beautiful. All right. <laughs> Just wanted to show you guys, if you want to check out the screwdriver, I'll drop a link below. I think it's like half the cost of the Fantex screwdriver. I don't know why I put that away. I actually need it again. I should probably mention this is not a sponsored segment. Okay, I have no sponsorship with whatever company this is. Oh, this has a Q latch system as well. I swear, ASUS started this and now everyone is using it. Eventually, we're going to be transitioning to a completely toolless world. We already got toolless side panels, we got toolless hard drive cages. And now we got toolless M.2 SSD slots. It's perfect. The cooler we're going with. <laughs> ah. For the cooler, we're going with the brand new ROG Ryujin 3. This is a match made in heaven with an ROG board and a 14 gen processor. You wouldn't put pineapple on pizza, would you? The Ryujin 3 goes with an ROG board like Incognito and the Hub or Anakin and a daycare, and even Fortnite and nine-year-olds. I guess what I'm trying to say here is that you don't just put another cooler with an ROG board. Mainly because we can control the fan and pump speed through the Armory Crate software, which is only available on ASUS motherboards. And with a PC named Frost, you better believe we're gonna try and keep the temps down as much as possible. So it's not really an aesthetics thing, but performance as well. Oh, I caught ASUS slacking. What's up with the black cables, you guys? Come on. I know this probably doesn't bother most of you watching and you think I'm overreacting, but like you guys are Asus. You are the king of white components. No one else does it better. No one even comes close to doing white products. The attention to detail that you guys put in your gear is unmatched. But then I see stuff like this. Why put in all this effort? If you're gonna leave these cables, I've seen these cables in white before, so I know it's possible, okay? All right, I'm done with the rant. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> Moving on to the build. Oh, these are the new magnetic fans that I keep hearing about. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, that is so satisfying. Check that out. Honestly, I prefer these over the Lin Li connect and slide method. These are so much easier. And I feel like this is what we're gonna see moving forward. Like we're gonna, we're gonna ditch all cables in 2024. Watch, all the fans are not gonna be either snapping or the connect style feature like the Lee and Lee fans. Look at this, everything about this fan is white. The blades, the centerpiece, the rubber grommets, even the back sticker is in white. Asus, you can do it, you can do it. Let me just have a quick two minutes talk with your product design team, okay? I promise, it will be worth it. But yeah, check this out. The magnets are strong too, wow. Bruh. All right, now it's time for the fun part, boys and girls, building the actual PC. So we're gonna be building in the new ROG Hyperion. And this is in the same league as their previous ROG Helios. If you guys remember, I built Big Red version 3.5 in there. So it's in the same category in the sense that they are massive super towers and they are most likely designed for the enthusiasts. This is not your average PC gamer's case, okay? It's massive, it's got tons of room for activities and expansion, and it's also pricey. So yeah, I have mixed feelings about the design choice. I think um, after I'm done building with it, I can kind of formulate an opinion if I do prefer this over the Helios, but only time will tell. 
I do have to give some credit to the design team of the Hyperion. I mean, you guys definitely went all out. You have to really look closely to appreciate the attention to detail that was put in this case. Like for example, this area over here. If you flip sideways, you can see the ROG logo. I think this also lights up as well. There's a section on the bottom here where you can slide to the left and pop this entire panel out so you can remove the power supply shroud. And even the front, this thing looks like a case from a uh, Transformers movie. I'm also obsessed with the side panels here. Not only do they sit on a hinge, but they're magnetic. No tools are required to open this up, but they're also tinted. And you guys know how I feel about a tinted side panel. Personally, I think they look the best, especially if you have RGB components inside. They look better in person and they look better on camera. The lights don't get overexposed and you guys will see what I'm talking about once the PC is built, of course. You get the same exact panel on the opposite side and I think you can pop these out. Yeah, there we go. You got a cable management tray over here that you can swing open and then you have access to your SSD trays, a fan hub on the bottom which also supports RGB fans and then you get two hard drive cages on the bottom here. So yeah, tons of room for cable management. And also look, the cables aren't white. Like this is what I was talking about. Asus definitely can do it if they choose to. Also, technically, you do have space to add up to three 120 millimeter fans on this bracket as well, but in order to avoid restricting airflow, you do have to remove the inner SSD tray. Got my hot cup of coffee over here. It's pouring outside. Can't beat this vibe, I gotta say. Okay, time to install the AIO next. So to remove the top panel, we just gotta lift this tab. Wow, that was actually very easy. And then to remove the top bracket, we have to unscrew this thumb screw over here. Look at that. Okay, so after all three fans are connected magnetically, you just have to attach one end of this single cable to one end of the fans. And there's only one way this connects because of this tab over here. So, wow, just like that. Oh, beautifully positioned Asus, look at that. It doesn't come in contact with the tubes. You guys knew what you were doing. Very nice. Do I wish the screws came in white? Yes. Am I gonna complain about it? Yes. So quick little cable management tip for you guys watching this video. If you ever come across a situation where you're plugging stuff into your motherboard and you have a lot of visible cable, like you see here, um, there is a much easier way of keeping this cable hidden. One option is to go through the nearest cable grommet, which doesn't exactly look the best either. The best option is always to go behind the motherboard if the space permits it. This is perfect for fan cables and RGB cables. This will always give you the cleanest look as opposed to going through a grommet. I find it adorable that the AIO comes with these dual 8-pin EPS cable extensions, but we're not gonna be using these because this is called Frost, and we do need some blue accents in there. This is the perfect shade of blue that we wanna throw in here. Um, this has been the color of Frost since the very beginning, I believe, so we're gonna stick to it for consistency. Okay, time to pop in the power supply. I think we slide this over here, pop this down, and then there are two screws in the front here. And then there are two screws in the back here. 
that are holding the actual power supply shroud to the case. So just like previous ROG Super Towers, I think you just slide to the right and you pull out. Nice. Looks like my pullout game is still good after all these years. So yeah, plenty of space over here for the ROG Thor. I mean, we technically don't need the hard drive cage over here because we're doing an M.2 SSD, but I'll leave it in there just because we do have the extra space to work with. So let's pop this bad boy in here. Oh yeah, look at that, so much space. So much extra space. like that, power supply is installed. And finally, the last piece to the Lego puzzle, ladies and gents, the RTX 4080 Strix. This is hands down, I've said it millions of times in the past, the best looking RTX 40 series cards in existence. You guys can fight me in the comment section all you want, but there's nothing more beautiful than this. Oh, yes, we reunited again. When's the last time I held a white 40 series cards? Oh, it was um, Andrew's build, actually. I put in a 4090 in his system, that's right. I think these come with the, um, the holographic card. If so, yes, I'm collecting these like infinity stones. This is going into my collection. One final flip before we put it in. close one. That was a close one. I will do this card a massive disservice if I just pop it in the traditional way. The Strix cards have to go in vertical mode. There is just no exception. Look at it. I mean, it looks so much better. We got to show off the amazing shroud with the triple fan. So luckily the case does come with a vertical bracket, but there is no PCI Gen 4 riser cable. So um, the only one I have at the office is this black one, which I know, I know, I know, <laughs> I know, I know. But luckily, I mean, it's not going to be that visible, right? Because it's going to be going behind the cord. So if I pop this in, we are covering about 90% of it. So it's not the end of the world, even for me. I might die a little inside, but you know, I, I'll, I'll get over it. Okay, what? Asus, how am I supposed to remove these? This has to be the most bizarre design choice. Look how recessed in the PCI brackets are. You, how am I supposed to unscrew these? Not even the provided screwdriver fits in this hole. Look at that. This is the only way I get line of sight with these screws. How the heck? Luckily, I kept this super long screwdriver from a previous build. This is the only way I can access these screws. Am I seriously missing something? This piece doesn't come off either. Yeah, I'm, I'm so lost. Maybe someone has built in this case before. You guys can let me know in the comment section because I have no clue how I'm actually supposed to take these screws off. So the only cable that doesn't come with the extensions is the PCI Gen 5 cable, which I bought separately. This one has a shroud built in, so it's going to protect the pins from getting damaged, but also it doesn't have those nasty Stealth Sense cables that stick out from the bottom here. So these look way nicer than the other ones. So we're going to plug this in first before we pop in the GPU. Oh yeah, that looks way better.
Well, here she is, ladies and gents. Frost V4 in the flesh. This thing is ginormous. Damn. It was definitely one of the more fun builds I've worked on. And after playing around with it for a few days, I gotta say, I do prefer this case over the Helios. It's just a fantastic looking case. I mean, I love the attention to detail that ASUS has put in here. And also it's so massive. It's got space for big components and cooling. Oh, and by the way, I figured out what that compartment is used for on the bottom. It's actually a storage area where you can keep the included screwdriver and a few PCI brackets. Not exactly sure why you would have those on hand, but you know, I guess that's cool. And the other smaller compartment is great for screws and essentials. It's always good to be prepared. You never know when you're gonna need it. I think a full custom loop build would look amazing in this case, but unfortunately my time was cut short with this project, so I did what I could within two days. But do mark my words, Frost V5 at the end of next year will be a full custom loop with the latest and greatest parts. Regardless, the build stayed true to the Frost theme. We did stick with all white components with subtle arctic blue accents. I even had to skin the power supply because it was going against the color scheme. But yeah, with that said, let's jump into a quick game. So I'll be using a brand new ROG Azov keyboard and the Harp Ace mouse, which is a collab between ROG and AimLab. This is a very light and responsive mouse. I'm actually digging the keyboard the most. This is a 75% wireless mechanical board with the ROG NX Storm switches that have been lubed. And normally I'm against clicky switches, but these sound really good. That's actually satisfying. It also has an OLED display near the top right that you can customize in the Armory app, which I thought was pretty cool. All right, boys and girls, let's get this dub. Teamwork. We've got the synergy already, so how do we get? One down. One down. Second down. Hello from the North Pole. Oof. Nice. Are we stealing? Oh, there's two, there's two, there's two, there's two. One left, there's one left. Okay. Bam, 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 bam. I can't res, I can't res. He's down, he's down. I'll get him, I'll get him up. No! Damn it, a little too late, it's all good. Let's go for the vault. Yes, yes, that's one baby. I got him, don't worry about it. Nice. No, Daddy. I'm coming. Wait, how do we get out of now? <laughs> that didn't work. <laughs> that did not work. Oh no! <laughs> that <laughs> One pink down. It's cashing out. No, no. Let's go. Let's go. Our first up, first first game of the day. Let's go. Wow, look at that, dude. What a comeback. GG's, boys. Of course, it wouldn't be deserving of the Frost title without ice cold temps, and that is exactly what we have achieved. As you saw in the game, the GPU didn't pass 50 degrees Celsius, and the CPU stayed consistently under 70, with a few spikes here and there. All this while the PC staying nearly silent. We're starting to see a lot of AIOs with these built-in LCD screens, but I have to say ASUS is among the few that do it really well because of the level of customization they offer in the software. 
It comes equipped with a massive 3.5 inch LCD screen that you can completely customize in the ROG Armory software. You can select from a few preloaded animated wallpapers or upload your very own in a GIF format. But if you want something a bit more functional, you can turn it into a sensor panel to show off hardware information. In my case, I chose the cyberpunk background and enabled the AIO to show my current CPU and the GPU temps. But you can select any other hardware info you want, like voltage, clock speeds, and more. You can even take it a step further and make it into a slideshow if you want. Aside from that, you can also control the pump and the fan speed, which is awesome because you don't have to mess with the bio settings or download another separate program. That's why it's always recommended to pair your 14th gen processor with an ROG motherboard and an ROG AIO. Synergy and compatibility. As always guys, don't forget to join the massive giveaway hosted by ROG where you can win some amazing hardware. I'll drop a link below for more info along with my Gleam link. I got a ton more awesome builds coming up. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys very soon in the next one.